very important that when all these young women come to Purdue and come to our program, they were the cream of the crop. They were the best at their school. So it's always been about who? Them. Okay? So the first thing that we talk about when they come, and even when they're recruited and they verbally commit to us and sign that letter, it's no longer about you. It's about the team. It's about Purdue. It's about the program. And everything you do is about everybody else except you. And that's the hardest lesson to learn. Because how many of us in here are selfish? <laughs> we all are. We all have, you know, we're like, I'm too tired. Am I going to do this? So I'm going to do this for myself. Rather, maybe stepping out and doing a community service activity or stepping out and making ourselves grow. We all have that. But I really feel that you really have to learn, and this is the key for our success, when you put the team first and put yourself equal to the team, then we're going to be okay. Because that's where you see the selfish players out on the court. You see the selfish players out in the community. It's all about them. They've got to have the attention. They've got to have the glory. It's you got to stroke them 100 times. And what I call them is prima donnas. We do not recruit prima donnas. And prima donnas are the ones that need to be stroked every second. The ones that it has to be about them, their name, not about the team. So we do a lot of activities. So some of the activities that we do are very simple. They're like, well, what do you do? We do a variety of things. But one of the first things we do is I have the whole group, and this is including the coaches. This isn't just about the team. They've got to see we're always up here and they're here, but all of a sudden there's times that we have to be here. When we go to battle on the court, we're here. But when I have to make the tough decisions, it's all on me. So there's got to be a difference. And someone's in the command, someone's going to be the leader, and whatever I say, then they're going to do. Okay? But what we do is we have everybody put a piece of uh, paper on their back. We take it on their back, just a white sheet of paper, and we give them like four minutes, and we're all involved. And we're all running around the room writing something positive about that person on that piece of paper. Okay, so all of a sudden, four minutes, and everybody takes their piece of paper, and then we go around the room, and that person reads what people are saying about it. You know, you're a great teammate, you're a great sister, and they have inside jokes, and of course we don't understand some of their stuff. Uh, and so they say, say certain things, but they're just smiling, and they're happy, and they feel good. You know, but one thing they also do is they just read off the paper, rather saying, I'm a great leader. Someone thinks I'm, they're not, they don't have that conviction. They don't, it's hard to say something good about yourself. How many of you have just said, hey, I'm really good at this? How many of you have done that? I know you have. <laughs> to what? Criticize, rip down, be negative. And you can say 10, I was a communication major here at Purdue. You can say 10 positives and one negative, what are they going to remember? The negative. And that negative is they're not listening to the message, they're listening to the tone. And so that makes a big difference. <coughs> message, tone. So that's what we do, and we're teaching them, like, you need to be looking. Your shoulders should be back. You should be saying, hey, I'm a great teammate. I make people laugh. Look at people's eyes and tell them what you think. Because the hardest thing to do is to look, look in someone's eyes and have a communication. And we teach that. And our kids look you dead in the eye. If you go up to them, they are amazing young women. And this is what I've heard from everybody. We're the greatest team to socialize and acknowledge and talk to everybody. Other teams don't do that, our team does, because it's very, very important. That's the teaching, that is a life skill. And that's what we teach. And they're looking you dead in the eye. Well, if I'm looking you dead in the eye, the eyes are the soul of a human being. So if all of a sudden you're looking me in the eye and you're saying something, but it doesn't match those eyes, mm -mm. we recognize it. You're saying this, but you're not feeling that. So that's why we're saying, a lot of people, oh, I'm good at this, I'm good at this. Well, that's not conviction. That's not something you stand for. So we do that. We do a thing with toilet paper. And they have no idea what's going to happen. We get a big circle. I'm like, take as much toilet paper as you have if you're going to the bathroom. So some are really funny. They take, like, rolls and rolls. And uh, I said, I don't want to be your roommate. Um, and then, you know, others take little pieces. You know, and then they don't realize and they have to kind of count every piece and then they have to say something positive about themselves. <laughs> so some have to come up with 15, some have to come up with three. Okay, I only take two. <laughs> you know, but it's again, it's they have to hold the toilet paper and say, 
I am a great point guard. I am a great communicator. But it takes a while. When I first do it, they're like, well, I'm, and they look up in the air. They're like, well, I think I'm good at this. I think I'm good at I'm like, who are you talking to? It's your team. And it's funny that they're like that with their peers, too. They're afraid to say something great about themselves. And the worst thing that we have in our society today is self-esteem. The kids that walk down the hallway and act like they got it all together, they're the ones that are the weakest. They really are. And we've been taught this by a lot of speakers that have come in to help us with the generation. It's called the Generation XY or YI. And they're just emotionally, intellectually different. And we'll talk about that here in a little bit. But you don't think. You think a kid's out there and they're out on the court and they're like, man, she's got that. Game to her, da da da. Well, deep inside, she might not be that most confident kid. They hold it on the outside, but what is their core inside? So we do that. We talk about roles. And it's to the point where they should know what their role is. We'll all do it. They'll all write each other's role down. Every single kid. So there should be, even coaches. So there should be 20. Put KK, boom, boom, that's her role. Coach Versa, Coach Smith, uh, Dre Mingo. And they have to write what the roles are. And it should all pretty much be the same. They should be saying the same things. Defender, scorer, leader, communicator. Okay? And at the end, I come in and say, okay, this is what your role is. So it's clarified. So if someone thinks they're a scorer, and I'm like, you're not a scorer whatsoever. <laughs> you're going to pass. You're going to rebound and defend. Then I clear it up. So we sit down and talk about that. Now we also talk that your roles can change. If you have an injury, what happens? Opportunity, someone else has to step up. So your role now is coming off the bench playing 10 minutes, well now your role may be 20 minutes. And we teach that that's in life. You're on a job, something happens. You gotta be so well equipped that you can take that adversity and now you're gonna be able to do whatever you want and make that change because you've gone through it. A lot of people don't go through those type of things. And so they're very well adjusted when they go into the workplace because they've had tough love. They've had the highs and the lows to another level besides the academic side. So I think that's, that's extremely powerful.